Good morning and welcome to our continued one year anniversary special of Frankly Speaking, broadcasting live from the Hesselson studio. I'm your host, and you're watching WYDC TV Big Fox. Yesterday's broadcast was a lot of fun. I hope that you all enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed it. And thank you for all the comments uh, these last few days, all the congratulations. Uh, just yesterday, I received hello and congratulations, Frank, on your pinning. Yes, you may see the corning. I got the pin to the city from Mayor Boland yesterday. In recognition of all your contributions to the community and well-deserved kudos. Thank you so much. It's very kind. I appreciate all the comments. Also, I asked a question, and I received a kind of a mixed bag uh, of responses, so I won't go through all of them. But I asked a question, um, if it were Aaron Rodgers or Jesse Ventura as RFK Jr.'s running mate, um, what are your thoughts on that? Do you have a favorite? Uh, do you have an opinion on that? I don't know if that... And you may disagree, and I'd love to hear if you disagree. I think it may not uh, add a lot of credence to his campaign. It may not. Uh, it may turn the campaign into somewhat of a uh, a joke in a way. But I will say, uh, from all the negative coverage the media has been giving him since his uh, Super Bowl ad, not liking the fact that he was starting to make some headway, uh, there were a lot of uh, negative, negative stories. This story, however has made the rounds. It has been everywhere. So if he does not pick either of those, it was still a very smart public relations move. Oh, look at all these waves come in. Thank you so much. We have a couple of New York updates. And speaking of New York updates, our guests this morning, Senator Tom O'Mara, and then we'll also be talking with Assemblyman Chris Friend. So we have had, uh, I think, an amazing lineup this week, and I appreciate um, everybody who has joined us. Tomorrow we'll have a little more laid back, some uh, some more guests, of course, but um, not as politically uh, heavy. Uh, maybe some, uh, I don't want to give too much weight, but some information about the community and the like. So that is tomorrow. We've been celebrating all week, and I do appreciate you all for joining me. I, I've got to mention this because when we had um, former Congressman Joe Sempolinski, current candidate for New York State Assembly, Joe Sempolinski and I just had a quick conversation about Governor Cuomo, former Governor Cuomo, trying to, um, I guess, understand what his next move is. Because if you recall, on Sunday, he gave a speech at a church. Uh, he has been putting out op-eds, even in the New York Post. He has been now critical of Governor Hochul in a couple of instances. Well, Yesterday on the Katz and Cosby show, he slammed Hochul's deployment of the National Guard in the New York City subways. Now, I know this is New York City related, and so wasn't the op-ed about congestion pricing, where he said originally he was for it, and now he realizes you've got to, quote, put the brakes on it. Well, Cuomo claimed that Governor Hochul's directive to station hundreds of troops in the subway system to check bags is useless. He said, quote, you need police. The National Guard are not police, and we don't have to reinvent the wheel here. Uh, why is there a spike in crime in the subway system? Because you have the lowest level of police in the subway system in a decade. Now, why am I bringing this up, talking about the city? Well, it's interesting how much uh, Cuomo is making the rounds, but also that he's focusing on what is maybe Hochul's Achilles heel, and she realizes it after uh, the race against Lee Zeldin, which is public safety. So he's saying there's a reduction in police. That's the real problem. You don't need the National Guard checking bags. You need transit police in the system. That's the answer. This is not what the National Guard does. It's not what they're trained to do. It's just politics, where the city council doesn't want to hire police. And the state doesn't want to say you should hire more police because it's if it's this hangover from defund the police. New Yorkers elected a police officer as mayor. The signal is undeniable. You elect a former police officer because you're saying, I want public safety. We have fewer cops today than when they elected Mayor Adams. So now he's hitting Governor Hochul on public safety. So what is the end game? And I and the reason I bring this up is I would love to hear your response. Feel free at any time to reach out to that number because we are going to get to our guests in just a moment. But I do find it fascinating that of all things, he's now bringing up public safety, which uh, 
is not Hochul's strong point, even though she may tell you differently and has been, as of lately, telling you differently that, boy, she's very strong. And you know we brought it up with Assemblyman Phil Palmasano, and I'm sure it'll come up today uh, with Senator Tom O'Meara and Assemblyman Chris Friend. So enough on that. We've got to take our first break. On the one-year anniversary celebration, part four of Frankly Speaking, right here on WYDC-TV. Big Fox, stay with us. Our beautiful view of Market Street as we broadcast live from the Hesselson studio on the one year anniversary edition of Frankly Speaking. I do have one quick announcement. We got to take a break because we have uh, Senator Tom O'Meara on in just a moment, but it's only fair. I mentioned Cuomo. Uh, Hochul was on The View yesterday, and she is now blaming Republicans for the migrant crisis. I know they're saying that Hochul is a big surrogate uh, for Biden. And I know that she's, you know, trying to secure the House for Democrats uh, through New York. But doesn't it always seem like she's behind the eight ball when she talks about something? It seems like she uses somebody else's talking points. And that's what this feels like. The Republicans in Congress and in the Senate said no, because Donald Trump called him up one night, the night before they should have voted on this to send 2,000 more agents, Border Patrol people to the border. I need some on the northern border, by the way. We border Canada. Money for states like New York. That should have helped us a lot. And just have a different path of citizenship and look at the asylum and whether it's too loose right now that now the way it is being used and probably abused. So I blame the Republicans now. The mess was bipartisan before that. So it was bipartisan before that. Uh, President Biden, uh, day one, essentially uh, removing that executive order of uh, former President Trump's campaigning on it, bragging about it uh, and opening the border. It was never, see, isn't that interesting? Now she blames Republicans 100%. Before, she didn't blame, for the last three years, three and a half years, didn't blame Democrats. It was still bipartisan for the last three years. Democrats and Republicans have not successfully found a way to have a path to legal citizenship because the employers want this. So again, behind the eight ball, I just don't feel that this push that she's the be-all and end-all as a campaign type person is founded uh, and, and but I again I, I pose this question to you but we've got to take a break because we have Senator Tom O'Mara on when we return so stay right there this is Frankly Speaking on Big Fox Welcome back to Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV Big Fox joining us for the one year anniversary celebration Senator Tom O'Mara thanks so much for being on the show Great to be with you, Frank, and uh, happy anniversary. Thank uh, you. It's great. I can't believe it's been a year already, right. but uh, you continue to be uh, maybe a lone voice uh, of sanity uh, and American and upstate values Thank that you. Uh, uh, we need to hear more of. And I really appreciate you, uh, you know, sounding the alarm on so many things on just the, the degradation of uh, of New York State and society in general it seems like it's so heartbreaking and here you are in albany right in the middle of it right now but it is heartbreaking when we see the mass exodus we see the public safety issues immigration the list can go on and on so it does get kind of discouraging how do you handle it being in in albany well it's to be honest you know it's certainly uh, demoralizing at times yeah. uh, uh being in the minority you know in both houses of the legislature we're outnumbered two to one uh, by Democrat majorities, dominated by New York City. Uh, we've got a, a, a Democratic governor uh, who's from upstate, but honestly, uh, you wouldn't know it no. um, by a lot of things that she uh, she pushes. Um, and you know, it's the fight is worth it. Mm-hmm. I mean, upstate New York and New York State as a whole, it's just a fabulous place. Uh, it's been a great place to live. For me to raise my family, for me growing up here uh, in Horseheads in the Southern Tier, uh, the Finger Lakes region, uh, it's just fabulous. But when you go from, you know, Lake Erie and Niagara Falls in the west to the Adirondacks to the beaches of Long Island, uh, Hudson Valley, it's a spectacular state. It really is. And that's what makes it so discouraging when you see the supermajority and you hear so many people talking about we need change, no one can afford to live here. Well, then let's stop with the supermajority already. Let's get out and vote. Well, 
Uh, it's about winning elections. Yeah. Uh, you know, elections have consequences. Uh, they haven't gone the way I would like to have seen them go uh, uh, over the past several election cycles. Mm -hmm. you know, it was six years ago, it was when uh, uh, the Republicans lost the majority in the state Senate. Yeah. Uh, and we went from a majority of just one or two people of a majority over a ma over half to now it's two to one, um, wow. uh, you know, outweighing uh, against us. So, uh, you know, our, our, our voices are certainly uh, outnumbered. Uh, sure. I think we win every debate on the floor of the legislature uh, and in public discourse. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet we still continue to get outvoted two to one. It is, it is uh, that, that is discouraging, to be honest. Um, but, you know, uh, we're fighting. Uh, we're going into another election year. Uh, we're working very hard to uh, uh, to seek uh, uh, opponents uh -huh. or uh, yeah, opponents for uh, Democratic incumbents. That you know we've we've got a whole slate of them lined up, uh, great. great candidates, uh, and we're hopeful of these issues that sooner or later, I'm hoping with my fingers crossed, <laughs> yes. that New Yorkers wake up uh, and start voting uh, with their own personal interests uh -huh. uh, and, and not the way it's been going. Well, it's discouraging because it's uh, it seems now that we're so many people are voting with their feet, right? And they're leaving the state. And you saw the from the Times Union, but on the Daily News, Dinapoli saying out migration is hurting state tax revenue, which to me is a no brainer headline. What else did we expect? Well, and and we've been talking about this um, for years now. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not the first time Dinapoli has come out with something like this. Right. Today, uh, or yesterday he did it with uh, in conjunction with the head of the New York State Business Council. Because uh, there's a big concern yeah. uh, with businesses leaving New York, um, manufacturing. We're seeing it across the state when manufacturers are, that have multi-state operations are making decisions of, of downsizing or streamlining. They're choosing to shutter their operation in New York State and move it to another more business-friendly state. Right. We're seeing it even more concerning. Uh, I mean, manufacturing is the most concerning to me. But from a revenue perspective in New York State, we're seeing it in the financial industry, where financial industry jobs are leaving Wall Street, yeah. leaving New York City uh, for lower cost states. For the first time ever, the state of Texas has more financial industry jobs than New York State does. Wow. And that should be sounding a huge alarm mm -hmm. for everybody. Uh, particularly the Democrats who just want to spend and throw money around <laughs> to pander for voting blocks in this state, they're going to run out of other people's money mm -hmm. to fund all these programs that they've been bloating uh, for decades. Do you see anything uh, positive coming out of the budget negotiations? Um, you know, let's let's hope that the Annapolis timing of uh, right. the controller's timing of this uh, uh, yesterday uh, will help weigh in uh, and control that. I think... Uh, I don't think we're going to see any tax increases, but also I don't think we're going to see any tax decreases, <laughs> which I would like to see. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's about affordability. Uh, it's about businesses to be able to operate and run their businesses uh, as best they can without interference from an overbearing state government. Uh, and that's what's been going on uh, from just the tax uh, perspective. Uh, now uh, the Green New Deal, electrification <laughs> issues that are an alarming concern. To manufacturers across the state uh, on what the cost of uh, doing business is going to be and the concerns of just more jobs leaving the state you know we're, we're seeing taxpayers leaving our our population numbers would be far worse if it wasn't for the numbers of uh, illegal immigrants right. coming in to the new york city area <laughs> that offsets a lot of the losses we're seeing from across the rest of the state so our numbers will be a lot worse so we're losing tax-paying citizens, mm -hmm. uh, individuals coming in with no or low skills, not contributing um, to uh, society, not contributing uh, in the form of tax revenues that, that uh, uh, everyday New Yorkers pay and struggle to pay uh, day in and day out. And I just want to touch on that because I want to talk public safety too in a second, but you mentioned the green energy <clears throat> proposals. I guess whenever we have this conversation, it just confuses me because the grid is not there yet. We do not have the technology for the things that have been proposed. So do we just still head right towards that, to that due date? Um, well, that's that's the way it's going. That's why uh, myself and uh, uh, my good friend and colleague, Bill Pomisano, yeah. were, were probably the two most outspoken ones mm -hmm. in Albany 
uh, on the concerns over this. And we just were at a meeting uh, in Horseheads just last week with uh, with the head of NYSEG talking about uh, the improvements they're going through. Uh, the numbers are astronomical uh, on it. I mean, they're doing just over a couple years now, I think $2.6 billion. They've only done $1.3 billion. And that's been built into their most recent rate case that increases NYSEG ratepayers' rates by 31% over a two and a half year period. And that's just the beginning. Um, the costs associated with this uh, are unknown because uh, the state uh, has refused to do a real cost benefit right. analysis to tell us what it's going to cost. Uh, really, the utilities, they're just, if they're required to do these upgrades, those costs just get passed on to the ratepayers. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to cost the utilities. If they get approved in a rate case by the Public Service Commission and, and a built-in uh, rate of return for those investments. So they're only the utilities are only going to grow uh, and make more money uh, off of this when all these, all these upgrade infrastructure requirements uh, come online and are approved by the Public Service Commission with a built-in rate of return typically around 9.5% rate of return um so i think that's part of the reason we're not seeing more pushback from right utility companies right. because well it's a lot of work for them and everything everything gets gets passed through by approval of the public service commission and that's the way uh the state legislature set this up when they passed the clcpa and then the climate action council they only set goals target dates with emission level reductions no plan on how to get right. there no direction on right. how to get there and leaving it all up to the Public Service Commission and NYSERDA to make these decisions, which will then pass the costs on uh, to ratepayers or various industries um, uh, that are, you know, using high levels of uh, of energy and particularly in, in fossil fuels, which will just raise the cost up uh, for everything. So the, the the Democrats in power did do this on purpose, and they've done it in many circumstances. Look at what's going on right now with congestion pricing in New York City. And they're all up in arms about what it's going to cost New Yorkers to drive in <laughs> below 62nd Street in New York City. Yet they set up this commission to make this decision. And it's now it's costing New Yorkers, which they knew was going to happen. But they're pointing the finger at the Congestion Pricing Commission the same way they're going to be pointing their finger at the Public Service Commission right. and NYSERDA uh, on this. You know, we were debating just last week on the floor of the legislature about electric school buses mm -hmm. and what the cost is going to be. It's astronomical the, the the democrat that was debating uh before this particular bill was saying well that's something uh that nicerta has to deal with and nicerta is making these decisions yeah. and they're going to cause the cost on all this well no the, the legislature set this up mm -hmm. and they passed the buck in the biggest way imaginable just before we go, because you may hear that they're vacuuming in the background, uh, so I'm trying to keep my mic off. But I want to talk about public safety because I know you and I have had lengthy discussions in the past about, you know, bail reform and these type of things. What did you think when Governor Hochul came out and, and tried to suggest that she's always been strong and tough on crime uh, and actually almost patting herself on the back how tough she is? It makes no sense to me. It's incomprehensible. Yeah. Uh, she's helped lead the way mm -hmm. on a lot of these efforts. Certainly some of it was started uh, under Cuomo, uh, but she's carried that torch right. um, to get herself reelected. Um, criminal coddling policies uh, across the board, uh, we're seeing it. And, you know, she's been telling us for months now that crime is getting better in New York City, that the subways are safe. It's just people's perception of it. Well. <laughs> You know, we see the news on yes. all these things. And then she comes out last week and puts the National Guard in the subway system. Yeah. Um, you know, you can't say one thing uh, that everything's fine, hunky-dory, safe, mm -hmm. you know, feel good about yourselves, and then throw the National Guard out uh, yeah. in your next breath is, uh, is really remarkable. Uh, and New Yorkers have got to wake up and really see that this is just blatant hypocrisy mm -hmm. about what's going on. Isn't it interesting because it's kind of like what we hear about with inflation now where they they tell us in the media, never mind what you're experiencing when you go to the grocery store. Trust us and yeah. the numbers. Hochul's been doing that same thing when it comes to public safety from really day one. Uh, without a doubt. Yeah. Uh, but I think New Yorkers know better. I know the constituents that I represent mm -hmm. in the 58th Senate District know better. Um, what 
New Yorkers and other districts and other parts of the states are, are, are thinking, but they've got to come to their senses mm -hmm. sooner rather than later, I hope, with the direction that this is going. Uh, and it's just it just spells disaster for New York State as a whole. And certainly DiNapoli's report highlights that. This week. Mm -hmm. And I recommend anybody find it. It's on Empire Reports right now with Times Union. Tom, thanks for giving us so much time. I know you're busy in Albany. I really appreciate you being a part of the, the one-year anniversary show. Well, Frank, thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure to be with you, as always. Yeah. And again, happy anniversary. Thank you. Next time you're in the area, we'll have you in the studio again, okay? Please do. All yeah. right. We'll be right back with Frankly Speaking. Stay with us. <laughs> Welcome back to the one-year anniversary celebration of Frankly Speaking. Thank you to Senator Tom O'Mara for being our guest. Also, I want to mention a big thank you to everybody who, is say, uh, who has been saying congratulations. I really appreciate that. Uh, it's almost overwhelming. So thank you so much. You have a great show, dude. I like that one. Thank you so much. But to, to get to some more nitty-gritty, because we don't have a lot of time, we've got to talk to Assemblyman Chris Friend in just a moment. So I want to get to some... Um, more political talking points here that people have sent in. From a viewer, people who saw the State of the Union blame Trump for not letting Congress pass the bill on the border. They have no idea all the garbage that's in that bill as just a way for the Democrats to get what they want. I think that's an interesting point because it, that has become, in the media and of course to the Democrat Party, uh, that has become the talking point. That it's Republicans, we saw from Governor Hochul on The View, it's uh, the Republicans holding it up because of Trump. Uh, they don't talk about, though Mike Johnson's tried to to mention and others, uh, they don't, but the media won't cover it, that there is things, in it. it's not a compromise bill. You know, a compromise very often, what we see in the media is one side has to give in to the other 100%. And I think you know which side I'm talking about. Uh, and that seems to be the case here. Also, another comment from a viewer. This green agenda of the Democrats is based on theory and conjecture. No proof to support it. What's interesting, uh, and I know we had talked about this at one point, and again, it's more of a New York City issue, uh, but there's the new green energy regulations, and it's just going to destroy many of the famous pizzerias in New York City. One of the oldest coal fire pizzerias in America is serving a cautionary tale as more than 100 other pizza shops in New York City prepare for the green new energy regulations. The general manager, Kevin Jackson, he works at John's of Bleecker Street, said it's going to be tough. $150,000 is a lot of money. That's what it's going to cost them to convert over to meet these regulations. I feel for the places they have to do it now because there was $150,000. This was three years ago that he paid this. I don't even know what would it would cost now. Starting April the 27th, the New York City Department of Environmental Protection will enforce the rule which applies to restaurants with cook stoves installed before May of 2016. The mandate, originally proposed in June, requires affected pizzeria owners to install a filter, then hire an engineer to inspect the carbon emissions. Those emissions must reportedly be reduced by at least 75%. So destroying iconic pizzerias uh, one employee at Coal Brick Oven Pizza said, I think putting this regulation in place for everyone, regardless if it's having an impact on neighbors or not, is overkill. Listen, I suffer from asthma. No one is more interested in having clean air, and in particular for you, than I am. However, it's a cost of doing business in New York City, as we found out. So just in general, New York, uh, making sure to drive out one business at a time until we are, well, it's like we mentioned yesterday on the program, the, the idea... Um, or was it with, no, this was a, a while ago, but the idea that we are on the loser end of things now. We're no longer looked at as a viable state to come to for business, um, whether you talk about the shoplifting issue, whether you just talk about the climate in general. So I wanted to mention that because I thought it tied in great with what a viewer had to say. Uh, let's see this. Unfortunately, this is from a viewer. The cycle of creating the problems and attempting to solve them with even bigger ones, keeps on repeating. That is very true. The only breaks in the cycle happens when Republican logic is applied, and that's very often why you'll see Democrats uh, run more conservative. 
The short gain of votes from talking points will slowly drop as more people wake up. Thank you for that. All right, we've got to take a break. We'll have Assemblyman Chris Friend. Oh, one quick announcement that I didn't have an opportunity to mention yesterday uh, where the news broke. Uh, I don't know if you'd call it uh, this story. But Congressman Langworthy has announced the 2024 Congressional Art Competition for local high school students. It's a really neat uh, program. Um, Anyone in the New York 23rd in high school, uh, they're eligible to submit artwork. The winning artwork will be displayed for one year in the U.S. Capitol. But the important note there, the deadline for submission is April 19th, 2024. Congressman Langworthy had this to say. Western New York and the Southern Tier are filled with artistic talent. And I'm thrilled to once again host a congressional art competition to showcase the incredible work of our local high school students. This competition provides a unique opportunity for young artists to have their talent recognized on the national stage. I encourage all eligible students to participate and share their art with our community and the nation. Now, if you have more questions, you see all the information there on the bottom of your screen. You can call our friend Sharon Murphy uh, or email. You see the email there as well. So spread the word on that. All right, we've got to take another short break. Stay with us. This is, I can take that off the screen now, I, I hope. Uh, this is, frankly speaking, here on WYDC TV, Big Fox celebrating one year on the air. Chris Friend coming up next. <laughs> Welcome back to Frankly Speaking, the big one-year anniversary special. We have Assemblyman Chris Friend on Zoom. Hey, Chris, it's good to see you. Good morning, Frank, and congratulations on your one-year. Thank you for everything that you're doing, providing you. information to our local area. Thank you. I appreciate that. We've got so much to cover, and I want to start um, with public safety because recently, and I've had this conversation uh, with Senator O'Mara. I've had it with Assemblyman uh, Phil Palmasano. I think it's really interesting that Hochul is now trying to act tough and say that she's always been very strong on public safety. She's always been very strong on the justice system. It's almost as if we weren't paying attention for the last however many years. Yeah, I mean, if she were truly strong with public safety, then... When you went to your local store to buy shaving cream or uh, razors, yeah. you wouldn't have to have somebody come over and unlock that bureau to get that razor and then have to pay for it immediately. You'd be able to go around and continue your shopping Great and point. pay for everything at once. And that's happening all across the state. Uh, just on another issue, uh, the MTA in January saw a 46% rise in their crime. So what does Governor Hochul do? She comes out and says, I'm going to conscript 1,000 National Guards, MTA police, and state police, and they're going to do bag searches. And what is that going to do if you don't want to have your bag searched? You're not allowed to go on the subway. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, but people that still want to commit crime, they're not going to hear by that. They're still going to be pushing people in front of the trains. Exactly. They're going to be shoving people on the, on, the, on the trains. And then she comes up with the idea that, well, this might cause anxiety if somebody sees a state police officer carrying a long arm. So the state police aren't going to carry the long arms, but yes, they will be there somewhere. You're just not going to see them. <laughs> it, it just, it's absolute lunacy. I mean, the real issue is bail reform. A hundred percent. We need to give the judges do, the judicial discretion and stop this repeat offender status that's going on. And what was something that was really interesting with, with uh, criminal and public safety right now, what we found out during the public hearings is if an individual commits a crime is brought in, in to be processed is released commits another crime process released if they do that multiple times in a day the judicial system the criminal ju justice system is only counting that as one crime that day wow is that right so that is another wow. way that they're fudging the numbers yeah to reduce the number of crimes that they actually have on top of the fact that they're not prosecuting crime they're not going after crime so automatically the numbers are going down, but they're also fudging the numbers right there. That's amazing. We had the, the recent story with, um, and I don't know how to exactly word this, but when there was body parts found, we had all of that scenario come down and those people were released, but Governor Hoka weighs in on this too. So you have the governor on a consistent basis saying she's tough on crime and then showing something else. If you if you recall, um, maybe you saw this, when she was saying she was tough on crime, she Blaine bail reform on former Governor Cuomo. Now, you, I'll never normally say this because I'm not normally ever going to agree with something Cuomo's spokesperson said, but he said, when does Kathy Hochul stop being an innocent bystander and start taking credit for what she should be, that she's been doing? I thought that was a very fair point. Right, and, and that, that body case was, oh. is just case in point. Yeah. 
the evidence that they had, the investigation that they did, did not warrant um, for them to keep them in right. with bail. Right. So they had to release them. But what they wanted to make sure is that they identified the individuals that were associated with this crime. Right. And immediately Governor Hochul weighs in and says, you should have charged them with a higher offense so you could keep them in jail. And she knows nothing about the case. Right. The attorney from Suffolk County has to come out and say, what are you doing weighing in? We have the best investigators in the country. Right. We want to make sure that we did this properly. And now Governor Hochul is saying, lock up what could be the innocent individuals. They may have not had anything to do with the murder. Right. They may have just had, who knows what part they played in this. But Governor Hochul, who's supporting bail reform, doesn't want to lock up the innocent, is saying, lock them up because it's making me look bad. Right. It's all. Instead it all goes back to PR. You're 100 percent right. It, uh, with her, it's always about. It's just like when they made the the last little changes to bail reform, and she did the press conferences saying, "See, we're really tough on crime." To her, it's all at the end of the day about PR and saving uh, the house for Democrats. And what I was shocked, I didn't realize this, but she's a lawyer. She got her law degree from Washington, yeah. and she should know better. Yes. I mean, that, it's absolutely ridiculous. And, and speaking of Governor Hocum, um I want to talk about, you know, Governor or Governor, excuse me, DiNapoli saying uh, out, mar out migration is hurting state tax revenue. We see businesses leaving in droves. To your point earlier, shoplifting has created a situation where either they're not looking at us uh, to come here to New York State or they're leaving. So I thought maybe you could talk about the climate in general on that. Right, and and that, the Napoli's report is very timely. Yeah, I, he perfect timing. recently timing. released that showing that an increase in taxation of the wealthy is actually going to hurt our, our top our revenue. Mm -hmm. Right now, we have an over reliance of uh, personal income tax, and we had a very large percentage of personal income tax filers leaving the state mm -hmm. and not coming in. Um, and then just recently. The number of personal income tax filers that have caused us a minor increase do not live in the state. Right. They're living in New Jersey and Connecticut, mm -hmm. Pennsylvania. So their entire income is not taxed, only the portion that they're making while working in most likely New York City or Westchester or one of those counties uh, that they're commuting to. So this is a huge impact. The uh, One House budgets just came out. Governor Hochul had increased the taxes or the spending within the state by four and a half percent. Wow. The one house budgets, the assembly raises it by 12 percent. Wow. <laughs> I don't so know what I expected. It just hasn't yeah. sunk into them yeah. that where, where, who creates inflation? Who is yeah. causing these problems? Right. Government spending is one of those top uh, issues with inflation. We can't continue to spend our way out of this recession. I know the government has changed the terms for what a recession is, right. but we are living in a recession and have been living in a recession. It's a massive inflation. They just came out with the reports that inflation is higher than they than they anticipated, and we can't continue to spend like this. So what does the Assembly One House budget do? They're increasing taxation just opposite of what Denapoli recommended. So they want to tax the wealthy yep. who are actually creating jobs, keeping money within the economy, and it's going to cause an even greater out migration. We have the greatest exodus of billionaires mm -hmm. within the state, and that's who they want to target. Unfortunately, when you leave, when you have one billionaire leave, it takes many, many, many millionaires yeah. to make up the difference of what a billionaire leaves with. Mm -hmm. So it's the wrong approach, and we're going in the wrong direction. And what we just saw with Attorney General James right. and what she's recently done, uh, she went after uh, pr former President Trump. Mm -hmm. And this was a victimless crime. Nobody was complaining except for the fact that got Attorney General James campaigned on the fact that she was going to get him. Mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to charge him. I'm going to convict him. They found the right judge to do exactly that, who was just posing for the camera during the entire trial. Exactly. His, his law clerk who was beside him is now going to be a, a judge. She's unopposed on the ballot. Uh, so she got what she needed. That judge got all the press that he wanted. And... President Trump, with that conviction, is causing Attorney General James is causing more businesses to leave the state yeah. because they realize if they haven't been donated to the Democrat coffers mm -hmm. and if they ever get off the line of what the Democrats say, they could be next. And, and we see that time and time again from mm -hmm. uh, the national government on down. Hillary Clinton yeah. getting rid of her server. 
no repercussions. Mm -hmm. Hunter Biden illegally filing for a gun permit. Millions of dollars in, ta in uh, revenue that he has owes back taxes, nothing done with it. Mm -hmm. President Biden classified documents as a senator of the United States, as a vice president, no ability to declassify that information. Clearly a violation of the classified records clause. No charge, exactly. nothing. Even if you want to say, oh, they're going to charge him, he'll just uh, go ahead and say that he, he's, he doesn't have to abide by this. Yeah. They don't even charge him with it. Mm -mm. But on, on the other hand, a Republican, a conservative, President Trump, mm -hmm. every state is trying to remove him from the ballot or to charge him in court and go after him. I know. So it's clearly very purposeful that if you're a Republican or conservative, you're standing on the line of being charged by any government, whether <clears throat> national or state. Mm -hmm. It sends a message, too. And that's what they want you to be scared of. And to your point, I saw a piece right after that decision came down uh, on the former president. And I've never watched the show, but Shark Tank, the guy from Shark Tank, Mr. Wonderful, I guess they call him, he came out and said it's decisions like this that are making New York go into the losers category, meaning no one in the business community is lo seriously looking at New York to come here or to stay here. And I thought, boy, that's a troubling sign when it's that crystal clear to so many at this point. Right. And, and another just great recent example was the Gold Star father who yes. made a called out during the State of the Union and was immediately arrested mm -hmm. and could face up to five years in prison. Jamal Bowman, on the other hand, actually pulled a fire alarm. We all saw him do it. There was he clearly went purposefully pulled that fire alarm, great. tried to hide the evidence by pulling those signs down. No jail time, a thousand dollar fine, no big deal. All the Palestinian protesters that blocked the presidential. Uh, uh, oh, the state. Of, oh, yeah, yeah, the motorcade before the, the state of the union. union. Yeah, exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. No charges against any one of them. Nothing there. Mm -hmm. Because they're supporting the Democrat cause. Double standard. We are clearly living in a divided nation. And speaking of that, as obviously the presidential election is starting to heat up, as you could say, now polling shows that um, illegal immigration is ranking at either number one or maybe number two behind public safety uh, to voters. What are you seeing in Albany? And I know I'm sure it's a major discussion about illegal immigration as we talk about New York City, but also here in upstate. Right, and, and that has been one of the top issues on uh, the Assembly's budget mm -hmm. as to where they're going to spend money. Uh, <clears throat> it, it's caused a major divide in the Democrat conference because uh, they don't want to see more of this illegal immigration. They see the crime that it's causing, the issues that it's causing with our, their school districts down in New York City and displacing their own students. Um, but it, it's, it's a huge issue that we need to face and the only way we can really face it is by doing this legally. Mm -hmm. Shut down the border, do exactly what Trump said, maintain the individuals in Mexico or in the country of origin, mm -hmm. process them in that country, and then bring them in. Right. President Biden has done just, just the opposite. He didn't want to have that public perception of so many people coming across the southern border, and we're actually seeing them come across the northern border now. Mm -hmm. And he's had secret flights where he's brought in over 300,000 illegals from other countries, directly flying them in to 43 uh, cities within our country. That's absolutely ridiculous. He knows that they don't belong here. They didn't come through any naturalization process. They didn't come through an immigration process. The oh, Chris, I might have lost you. Hold on real quick. We're going to take a short break. Freezing up. Stay with us. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV, Big Fox. We fixed the technical issue. Uh, Chris, thanks again for being on the, on the program. Before uh, the computer froze, we were talking uh, about the illegal immigration issue, and you had mentioned uh, the secretive flights kind of going back, and, and Biden doing that, but kind of going back to what we were saying about Hochul, too. It's all about the optics, trying to confuse people about what's really going on. Correct, and uh, we've had illegals being flown into New York for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Uh, we actually had children being flown in, and I had reached out to Governor Hochul's office to ask, ask where are these uh, individuals, where are they coming from? Right. We know if they've been vaccinated, if we're going to be putting them into schools, where are they going? And, and the governor's office never replied to me about that. Uh, there's a lot of issues that are going on. And um, again, we know nothing about these individuals. They're not being, um, we have no DNA about them. We have no fingerprinting going on. No. We have no idea of their background. 
I've spoken with congressional members who've been to the southern border, and they've seen the stockpiles of IDs left on the other side of the border. Wow. Because they're told when they come across to ditch all that information to make sure that you are unidentifiable. <laughs> and here are the terms and words that you need to say when anybody from the U.S. asks you questions so that they get the right terminology, they get through the checkpoints and, and get the access and the services that uh, they're, they're asking them to do. Unfortunately, many of these individuals are being human trafficked. Yes. Uh, many horrible. of them are being, these women are being raped many, many, many times, many times a day. And it's, it's just horrendous that we're trying, that we're supporting anything like this. Mm -hmm. We have time and time again, where we're supporting issues where we're trying to fight human trafficking. We're trying to fight drug abuse but then we're supporting these illegals coming across all on the idea that they're immigrants who are gonna build up our country and who built our country. And that's just, that's a fallacy. Right, there's a great point um, that they made at the New York Post just the other day that was, cause that's what uh, President Biden's been saying that they built this country, ignoring the legal system. And that's what we're talking about here, the illegal aspect of this. And think of the fact that the president apologized for saying illegal and then couldn't, of course, as we now know, get Lake and Riley's name right. I mean, it's it's, it becomes very frustrating. And I think that's why voters have made it their number, if not number one, number one or number two concern before we head into the election. Right, and that, that's just appalling. It's really abhorrent that he came through and apologized for calling that individual an illegal. Mm -hmm. He beat Lake and Riley's head in. Yeah, it's he horrible. He smashed her head. I mean, what kind of sick individual does that to mm -hmm. another human being, especially somebody like Lake and Riley? I mean, this is completely uncalled for, and you do not need to show that individual compassion. No, it's horrible. I know uh, you're very busy here in Albany. Before we go, how is everything in Albany? Good? It, it's, uh, it's definitely very chaotic. <laughs> uh, we're just getting ready to go through the one-house budget process. Uh, it was released Monday night, uh, very late, yeah. and uh, for whatever reason, they're allowing that bill to have the three-day aging <laughs> period. So we're voting on it tomorrow on a getaway day. They're hoping that we're not going to debate the bill and drag it out. That's right. why they do it on the getaway day, as well as trying to give it the transparency issue, which they haven't done for many other bills this session mm -hmm. or last session. Do you think you'll make the deadline? Uh, uh, no. Okay. We, well, there we, we go. Are, <laughs> we, we are so far apart from where yeah. the governor started yeah. and everything that they're asking for. Uh, it, it's definitely not going to be no. on time. Budget. Well, Chris, thanks so much for being on the one-year anniversary special. I can't thank you enough. Well, congratulations, Frank. Thanks. All right, we'll be right back with Frankly Speaking. Stay with us. Sorry about that. A couple of quick little glitches there. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV Big Fox, celebrating the one year anniversary. It's hard to believe. And we've had some amazing guests, haven't we? And I appreciate everybody who said thanks. We've got a lot of messages to get to before we wrap up today's edition. This, these are all from viewers. New York ranks last in the country for their sensibilities in government policies, all while the Biden administration is making America last. So yes, that's not, not good uh, numbers if you think about it. Uh, Hochul and James have shown the world who the real fascists in America are. And that's in reference to what Assemblyman uh, Chris Friend had to say of what that's going to do for business. I mean, I know I mentioned it with Mr. Wonderful. Again, I don't know why I keep quoting this guy. I never watched Shark Tank, but it's a, it's a great point. It scares more businesses away. And then we have a uh, back to back what I had mentioned with uh, the new green energy policies that are, that are hurting so much. Uh, here's another comment. Tom's comments, meaning Tom O'Mary, if you're just tuning into the program, Tom's comments paint a bleak picture on where the state is going. It's hard to see how the Republicans can change the direction of New York, given that the Democrat machine owns the cities with social programs dividing us, mail-in voting, and ballot harvesting. Thank you, Ken. Uh, how about this? The fly-by-night businesses will come for the free tax gifts, then turn around and fold with zero consequences. Another great point. How often has that happened? Uh, how, many, how many billions have we promised uh, various corporations that ended up folding next in the construction world we have what's called a performance bond maybe that same thing could be applied to our key elected officials to give incentive to do a better job yeah maybe i mean i don't think they listen they're making many of them uh in washington making a fortune from not performing well so i'm not sure it would have to be one heck of a kind of a bonus if you will and currently they could burn the country to the ground and walk away the way the system is right now well i appreciate that hey thank you to everybody who reached out i'm running late uh, i can't believe how much fun i've had 
on the one year anniversary edition of Frankly Speaking. I'm hoping you're having as much fun, and I hope that you'll tune in tomorrow morning, starting at 7 for Frankly Speaking, only on Big Fox. Have a great day, everyone.